Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Zoo Box. I'm Sean, and this is another episode of Hot Reacts Only, our, uh, <laughs> I guess, reaction show. Lately, I've been doing trailers. Well, I, I, when I say lately, I did one yesterday, so I guess I'm going to do another one today. They released another trailer, and I say, fuck it, why not? I got things to say about trailers. Today, we're going to be talking about the, uh, the shortly will be upon us here, Renfield. Renfield 2023, directed by Chris McKay, written by Robert Kirkman and Ryan Ridley, starring Nicolas Cage, Nicholas Holt, and Aquafina. It's going to be hitting theater soon. Well, they dropped the trailer today. Uh, everybody had been kind of hotly anticipating this because they wanted to get a peek at what old Nick Cage was doing. He plays Dracula in the film uh, to Nicholas Holt's Renfield. And uh, it's kind of like a, a silly comedy fantasy monster movie, I guess. I have seen parts of this trailer. I am not going in completely blind. I saw parts of it uh, while I was in the waiting room at one of my kids' appointments today. So I got a little bit of a sense of it, a little bit of a sense. But I was just kind of stewing about it, thinking about it. I figured, why not make another video? Why not make some content, right? And I want to assure everybody, I am not in the midst of some sort of niacin rush, some niacin overdose. You know, I got this backlight here. <laughs> it just kind of blows me out from the front. I got orange walls. I'm wearing like a pinkish, the light salmon pink shirts. I got a light here. It's not doing me any favors though. It's not really helping me. I'm getting a little bit. You can see it. You can see a little bit right there. A little bit right there, but it's not really helping me. Anyways, let's watch this trailer. So let's just get into it. Renfield official trailer. Here we go. Sorry to interrupt. Are you okay? I need to get out of a toxic relationship. Uh. So already I kind of the framing of this is it's pretty obvious if you were to think about the idea of like Renfield and Dracula, what the relationship would be. And they're going to do this kind of modern bullshit where it's like, oh, we're in a toxic relationship, mate. Me and the old Dracula. We're in a toxic relationship. Why don't you start by telling us what? I need to go to therapy. I need to learn how to have some self-confidence, mate. Oi. Oi. Look at me, mate. I'm Renfield. <laughs> I'm, I'm British. Brought you here. My boss, he's different. You can't get him out of your head. No. I need your assistance. You know, I understand that they kinda, they're kind of they kind of using the Dracula thing as a little bit of a reveal in the trailer. I wonder if that's because... I wonder if they don't... You know, it's... Well, now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if there's kind of like this this perspective on like Gen Z and maybe younger millennials that they don't even know who Renfield is. Like they're not familiar enough with the lore. Like if you're not into this kind of stuff, because these are not the kind of stories that everybody has familiarity with anymore. No pun intended. Uh, but not everybody is familiar with these kinds of stories anymore. There used to be, there was a time and you know, probably kind of ended in my generation when I was growing up where everybody from a cultural standpoint kind of had the same frames of reference, Dracula, Renfield, those kinds of stories, even the universal monster movies. Like they, those were things that everybody kind of knew about. They were known quantities and you could make references and jokes and there would be things that would be kind of universally celebrated, universally understood. But I don't think that's so much the case these days. So they could actually kind of use this as a reveal. Granted, it's it comes on pretty quick. We're at 23 seconds into the trailer. But I do think there is something to that, though, that they're even able to do that at all in this trailer. Um, I mean, I get I get that even if you did know, they're just kind of having fun. You know, I could be way off base. Maybe I'm just a big dumb dumb. But I think there's something there. There's something there. There's something there we could scratch into, you know. I'm coming, Martha! Oh, you feel like he could destroy you with the snap of his fingers. Wouldn't even need to snap. Ah! Okay. Uh-huh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, what? Oh, she did it too. The sly poots over there. Oh, what a nice lady. She did it too. We're both on the same page, me and this woman. So, yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, part of the reveal now that I'm just even thinking about it a little bit more is the fact that everybody's just waiting to see what Nicolas Cage himself is going to do with the role. Like, are we going to get like the good, crazy Nicolas Cage or the bad, crazy Nicolas Cage? Because he's a guy that's really director dependent. I'll say this, though, about Nicolas Cage. One thing I respect about Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Cage never, ever phones it in. He is always giving 
pretty much like a hundred percent. Go watch like his direct to video bullshit, shitty action movies. He's not like a Bruce Willis or uh, what's that game? Or John Cusack. John Cusack is the same way. Or like even before Bruce Willis, <laughs> um, you know, was diagnosed with aphasia. Even before all that came out, like even before that, he was phoning in performances for years, getting paychecks. Uh, but even though Nicolas Cage, he found himself in the, in a place in his life because of taxes, all these back taxes he owed, he had to just churn out shit constantly. But he would always go for it because he's just interested. It was like an opportunity for him. I think I heard him talk about it one time at like a panel. It's like it's an opportunity for me to just to kind of play, to try shit out. So you get kind of k- k- kooky, off the wall, kind of weird, intense, sometimes surprisingly good performances in kind of bad shitty movies. Um, sometimes, you know, that magic happens and those stars align. You get things like Mandy, uh, which is kind of plays to both his wacky strengths and also his dramatic chops, um, which Mandy is not for everybody, but like his performance in Mandy is the quintessential Nicolas Cage performance. It's exactly what you want when you hire Nicolas Cage. Like I said, it's like heightened and goofy, but it's also very serious and dramatic at the same time. And he's able to find the right balance. Renfield, bring in innocent victims. I want a handful of nuns, a busload of cheerleaders. And I just want to know more. So without seeing really, like, seeing it yet, I'm digging the voice. I'm digging the voice. I found, I feel like he's found the right, the right modulation there. It's coming from the, it's coming from the right place. I think we're going to get, like, I think it's going to be a well-executed well executed performance from Nicolas Cage. I mean, I have my doubts about the movie itself. It's uh, directed by Chris McKay, which I don't know if he's related to Adam McKay, Adam shitty Oliver Stone McKay, as he's come to be known in my mind, in my house. I say, my wife says, Hey, can we watch Anchorman? Oh, who directed that? That Adam McKay guy said, who you mean? Adam shitty Oliver Stone McKay. Yes, darling. We can watch Anchorman. Um, uh, he directed The Tomorrow War, which wasn't great. That was like that Chris Pratt came out, I think, last 4th of July uh, alien invasion movie, which had like potential to be cool, but it just wasn't very good. And he directed my my least favorite of the Lego movies. I watched, I see a lot of these because I have kids. Um, the Lego Batman movie, which I actually don't like at all. I've seen it a bajillion times. It's one of my son's favorite movies, or it was for a while. So I've seen it. A bagillion times, and uh, and I don't like it very much. So I'm, I don't have much faith that he's going to be able to pull this movie off, and it's going to be something that I'm actually going to like in its totality. I'll probably like pieces of it. Maybe I'll like Nicolas Cage, but the movie itself I kind of don't I don't really care about. I, I'm here for Cage. I'm here for Cage. Life again. But this modern world is a dangerous place. So Renfield also has like super Dracula powers. Oh yes. I mean, we all know that Renfield eats bugs. You know, that's part of the uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula is part of the character. He ends up being this weird ghoulish creature like person. You know, Dracula's familiar, his lackey. And in the, in the book and the novel and also in the movie, uh, the Francis Ford Coppola movie was it Tom Waits. Tom Waits plays Renfield. They should have brought Tom Waits back. Tom Waits and Nicholas Cage. That'd been great. Um, yeah, he eats bugs and shit because he's turning into like a creature of the night and he'll subsist on the creepies and crawlies or whatever. But he doesn't give him fucking superpowers. Already, I'm off. I'm done. I no longer care about this movie at all. Look, oh, look at this. It looks like he's about to fucking kick a field goal. Fucking stupid. You know, and I like Nicholas Holt too. Nicholas Holt's a pretty solid actor, very eclectic. Makes a lot of interesting choices as an actor as well in terms of the projects he works on. Um, so I like Nicholas Holt, but this may not be a great version of Nicholas Holt. I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. Thank you. You saved my life. Did I watch? You know, see, because in the darkness, you know, they can be good people, too. Renfield's just been waiting for his opportunity, you know, which is they're just completely going to change the character of Renfield, which is fine. I get it. They're doing it for this 
high concept comedy film starring Aquafina. Aquafina didn't remember Aquafina got shit on for cultural appropriation because she was in that Marvel movie. Was it Shang Chi? Because of course, and uh, she did like a Brooklyn accent or something. And uh, they said she's trying to sound like a black woman. She, this is this is vocal blackface. What is Aquafina doing with her privilege? I will, hopefully she keeps it. You know, she keeps it either Asian affectation or just plain old American. We can only hope. I just don't want her to get in trouble again. You know, I don't want to get her to get in trouble again. That'd be awful. We'd all feel bad. You know, stop Asian hate. Stop it. Stop it now. Don't you cut a guy with a decorative serving platter? It's in the wrist. Let me explain. My boss gave me this power. Actually, making Renfield into this completely takes away everything from the character. Now he's just like a lame superhero. How how fucking lame. Oh my god. I guess I really didn't pay attention to this trailer when I was caught bits and pieces earlier. Holy shit, how fucking stupid. Even as a comedy, this is stupid. So he's just some souped up dude. He's way too capable. He's way too capable. It's a better story if Renfield can't do all this shit. Sure, we could maybe contrive something that maybe Renfield could live forever, whatever, maybe gets the drips of Dracula's blood, something. I don't remember in vampire lore that a familiar's having fucking superpowers. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm way off base. Maybe they all have always known uh, Kung Fu and look like they're from the fucking raid. You know, the movie The Raid. <laughs> maybe the, maybe it's always been that way. Maybe it's just me. In return, I tend to his needs, including care, feeding. You bring him people to eat? Do you suck his dick, though? hey You're like the guy that gets the villain's postmates. But if you were to stop focusing on his needs, what would happen? He won't grow to full power. Exactly. He won't grow to... I like how they... they this this trailer's not great, actually. It seems like it's kind of struggling to get its point across. Because it's, it's trying to tell you the story, you know, to tell you why you should be interested. And it seems like it's kind of struggling to put the pieces together. Like, it's a little sloppy. Like, it's a little sloppy. Um, but again, this whole Redfield of the superpower thing, I know I'm kind of harping on it, but it just makes it uninteresting. If Renfield is this capable, then why would we ever feel worried for Renfield? Even in the context of a heightened comedy like this, why would we ever give a fuck about Renfield getting attacked and all the police and all this kind of crazy shit that he has to do to protect Dracula or get Dracula to safety during the day? Why would we care? It's so much better if he's just a guy. He's just a dude. So much better. But no, he just got to pop a couple creepy crawlies, a couple spiders, a couple spiders in the old the old gob there, and he's ready to rock and roll. The full power. What? That's so weird. Why would you phrase it like that? But yes. Hi. Are you here for the meeting? Well, come on. No. Oh, no. no! Come call me the dark one. So you get it, because vampires have to be invited in. Others, the lord of death. To most, I am the action. Okay, obviously we're dealing with a little bit more than just narcissism here. Now, let's eat. Ugh, let's eat. Let me see here. Okay, well, we got a little bit of CGI enhancement. I don't hate the design, though. I don't hate the design. I, I have a feeling Nicolas Cage is not actually going to be in this movie very much. He's going to be like a, a glorified cameo. I don't hate this outfit. I don't hate this look. Uh, it should be in something that's a little goofy and heightened. Like, it shouldn't be in a serious Renfield story. I get that. But uh, just the whole, like, you know this movie? You know what it reminds me of? Remember fucking remember that movie Wanted? <laughs> remember Wanted from back in the day like 2000 what 8 2009? It just gives me that kind of vibe like this very overdone, overproduced, very overly slick kind of action adventure comedy type movie. Not that I mean Wanted had funny movement. Well, I guess it, it definitely had I guess it was a little bit of a comedy. But it just kind of reminds me of that. That's the vibe I get from it. 
And it also looks very small, too. Like, it, we've only seen, you're only showing you, like, a couple major locations, which I assume most of the movie takes place. Most of the movie is going to take place in this restaurant club uh, and then the meeting hall here. What do you call these things? AA type meetings for battered, for battered uh, helpers, for battered manservants. But, you know, I don't hate, I don't hate the, uh, the Nick Cage stuff. The Nick Cage stuff I'm fine with. I kind of, I like the voice. I kind of like what he's doing with it. I could get down. Let's see it again. Some call me the dark one. Others, the Lord of Death. To most, I am the action. Okay, obviously we're dealing with a little bit more than just narcissism here. Oh, my God. It's, it's, does not, the movie itself does not look promising. I'm, I hate to tell you uh, this, everybody, but... Um, why the f- like? Look at this shit, dude. Look at this bullshit. Look at this bullshit. <laughs> like, why? Who? <laughs> why did they make him a superhero? Why did they do this? Why did they do this to my boy Redfield? Like, it could have been just. I don't know. I don't, maybe I'm fucking wrong. Maybe I'm way off base, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not digging this. This April, gird your loins, everybody. We got Nicholas Hult. We got Aquafina. Aquafina. She you know she made an okay movie. There was she did like a low key movie that she was in. It's it called like the the visits or the visitation or something about her going back to her home country and uh, to bury her grandmother, I think, or to plan her grandmother's funeral. It's actually a pretty good movie. Pretty sweet movie. Very tender. Uh, what is this? I can't remember the name of it, though. I think it's The Visitation. I can't remember. Oh, more more uh, action packed Renfield. You're like the guy that gets the villain's postmates. But if you were to stop focusing on his needs. You're like the guy who gets the villain's postmates. It's so hip. It's so hip. I want to die. I want to die. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too intrigued with this trailer. I thought it's kind of a bad trailer to boot. I don't think it's uh paced very well. It seems like it's very sloppy. It makes the movie seem like it's going to be a little sloppy and a little all over the place, and it's just going to have too many elements. And there's going to be always kind of this. Uh, it's going to have tone problems. That's what it looks like to me. It's going to have tone issues. As they say in the biz. Well, I think that's going to do it for me today. I got to end this before one of my children needs me. But, uh, yeah, you guys have a great one. Have a great rest of your day. I will. I'll have a better day now that I'm done watching the Renfield trailer for almost 20 minutes. Maybe I am headed for a niacin overdose rage situation. That's what I need now. Now I need the niacin to just to get me going. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck off. All right. If you'd like to know more about Zoobox, a bunch of links in the description. Go check them out there. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on Hot Reacts Only, on Zoobox, on Nightcap, on the Late Late Show with Profit, wherever. You know, <laughs> you expect me to like start all of a sudden making consistent uploads to this channel. Are you out of your fucking mind? Goodbye. <laughs>